only constant. Take a minute to think about what this quote means to you. To me, it brings thoughts of the electrifying future and what it holds. Societal norms, ideas, identities, and personalities are all at a constant change. And so change is all around us. And the biggest influence of change in today's complex world is technology. Now, imagine this. You wake up frantically at 10.30 instead of 6 a.m. because the alarm on your phone did not ring. You freshen up to check the news online to find that the TV isn't responding. You then try messaging your family and friends only to see that your messages aren't delivering. You then try calling and emailing the phone company only to realize that there isn't any service. Sounds hellish, right? I wouldn't want that happening to me. But do you see the pattern? Throughout the story, the common factor is technology and our dependence on it. So my question lies, how did we get here and how do we stop it from reaching a point where there isn't any return? Hello and good evening. My name is Maithli Tejas Patel, and today I'm here to question the new normal and identify the role of psychology in preventing our overdependence on technology. We all know technology has shaped the way that we live, work, and interact with those around us. The world's tides have drastically shifted due to the profound impact of technology and its exponential growth. So what are the main things affected by this technological advancement? Communication, work, and entertainment. I remember going on walks with my friends every evening, and now they're just a phone call away. It's no secret that we use technology more and more as time goes by. Globally, people average six hours and 58 minutes of daily screen time compared to just 20 years ago when 78% of the population was online for less than three hours. Over the course of 20 years, we have more than doubled our usage of the internet. Now, don't get me wrong, I know we can't avoid using the internet, but maybe we can train ourselves not to be as dependent on it as we are today. Research shows that technology has made us lose common sense, which, uh, let's be real, most of us didn't have in the first place. It has also induced self-isolation, because everything we need is available with a tap on the phone. This Overdependence that we've developed on technology can be explained by the intricate science of psychology. So let's discuss some theories to see how we develop this overdependence and how we can use them to inhibit it. First developed by Mara in 1947, the two factor theory is centered around behaviorism. It consists of, well, two factors classical and operant conditioning. For you to fully grasp this theory, let me clarify a few things first. A neutral stimulus is a technological device which initially elicits no psychologically conditioned response. Over time, when you use this device, it becomes associated with the pleasure that you feel when you're using it. For example, when you're using a device and see something funny or relatable, you feel a sense of pleasure, causing you to repeat this behavior. And over time, this pleasure is associated with the device, which turns into a continuous cycle of usage. And that is operant conditioning. Both classical and operant conditioning work together to create this atmosphere of tech dependency. So how do we use this theory to revoke the problem instead of reinforcing it? You all probably already know that things such as spending time with your friends, meditation, physical activity, or even just a delicious meal can cause happiness due to the release of certain hormones. So the simple idea would be to take some time off every morning or every evening to wind down without using any technology. So that means no watching your favorite Netflix show immediately after a long day of work. Trust me on this. Instead, go for a walk or out to dinner with a friend. When such activities that don't revolve around technology please you, eventually you can replace the source of happiness from tech to something else. And this way, a more healthy life is reinforced and not an obsession with a Netflix show with a cliffhanger at the end of each episode. Annoying, am I right? Now, indulge me a little. How many of you have seen someone driving while on the phone and thought to themselves, we're allowed to do that, and before you know it, you're doing it too. Why does this happen? 
Well, the simple answer would be the social learning theory. First developed by Albert Bandura, the social learning theory states that behavior is learned by observing and imitating others. It explains why you often see young children demanding their phones or iPads while eating or playing. They see adults around them doing it, and they want to reciprocate this behavior in order to fit into society. At that age, they do not realize the effect it could have on their development. However, we can use this theory to prevent the problem. Hypothetically, if parents had a conversation at lunch or read a book before bed, this mannerism would be reciprocated by the younger children in the household, allowing exemplary habits to form and preventing overdependence before it fully materializes. Moving on, another explanation for our need to be constantly online is the social identity theory. This theory was first developed by Tachfell and Turner, and it explains why we all feel the need to conform to behavior that others indulge in. According to this theory, we all feel an external pressure to conform, which leads to an internal pressure to fit in. This becomes an itch, so we give in to fit in. This explains why we all become dependent on technology over time and feel the need to conform to behavior that is the new normal dictated by society. So how do we avoid giving in? Here's the thing you should try. The next time you feel the need to copy someone else's harmful behavior that revolves around technology, ask yourself, is it really necessary? Okay, this person is driving while on the phone. Should I be doing it too? Is it an emergency? And is it safe for me and those around me? The simplest question of them all, though, is that is it going to be beneficial for me in the long term? If you're hesitant to answer any of those questions, then it's not a good decision to make and not a good behavior to reciprocate. Sometimes, just because someone else is doing it doesn't mean you have to do it too. Don't be a sheep. It's time for us to take matters into our own hands and realize that this dependency on technology is doing more harm than good. And so I would like to end with one thing. It's not faith in technology, it's faith in people. Thank you. Oh.